Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture you learned how to create some basic meshes using primitives and how to change their appearance by adding some HTML attributes. In this lecture we are going to move our 3D objects to different positions and we are also going to talk about a relative positioning. All entities, including the camera, inherently have the position component, which is basically a data container represented by an HTML attribute and has a default value of 0 for the x, y and z axis. So again, that's why here in our scene, when I reload the page, we see the camera, the box and the cylinder we created in the previous lecture at the same position. So how can we transform an entity in the 3D space? A-Frame uses a right-handed coordinate system. And to illustrate this concept, I'm using an image from the website whatwhenhow.com, which shows that if we don't change the default camera direction, the thumb finger represents the positive x-axis that extends right, the index finger represents the positive y-axis that extends up, and the middle finger represents the positive z-axis that extends out of the screen, so towards us. I'll go back to Live Preview and reload the page. When setting these values for the position component, again bear in mind that a frame's distance unit is in meters. So let's place our box that now is kind of a green wall right in front of us. And to do this I'm setting the z-axis value to a negative value, let's say minus 5. And so this is the new position of our box. And if I keep incrementing the negative value, you can see how it moves away from us. So, minus 7, minus 9. I'm going to reload the page and move the box closer by decreasing the z-axis value to minus 7. Then I move it up by setting a positive value for the y-axis. So, 1, 2, and 3 should be okay. And I'm also changing the values of the width and the height attributes to turn our wall into a panel with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So width 8, height 4.5 and depth 0.2. And I finally move around our scene again. Ok, now that you have an idea of how the position component works, it's time to talk about the relative positioning and the advantages that you can take from it. Inside the A-box primitive I'm nesting an A-circle primitive. So now we have a child entity and a parent entity. Then I attach the position component to the circle and when I change the z-axis value to a positive number you can see the circle appearing. I move around our scene so you can see better. Then I change its color to a dark grey. and add the side attribute with the double value like we did with the cylinder so it'll be visible from both sides. And here you can see that the circle is just one meter far from the green panel and since a child entity inherits its workspace position from its parent the circle is actually at a workspace position of minus 6 that comes from minus 7 plus 1. Now, since the panel has a depth of 0.2, that is 20 cm, and the depth originates from its center, if I set the circle a z-axis value to 0.1, the circle will be perfectly aligned with the green panel surface. And then, to avoid that the two faces overlap, I move the circle just one more centimeter away from the green panel and towards us. So instead of 0.10, that is 10 centimeters, 
I set this value to 0 0.11. That's it. Perfect. OK, so far we know that the green panel has a width of 8 meters, so each half measures 4 meters, and that the circle has a default radius of 1, so a default diameter of 2 meters. Therefore, if I move the circle 2 meters to our right, increasing the value of the x-axis, we end up with a circle that is perfectly centered and aligned to the right half of the green panel. And now I'm going to center and align another circle primitive with the left half of the green panel, but this time I'll create this entity directly in the scene. It's going to be a yellow circle, So I use the A circle primitive again, set its color to FFC107, and the side attribute to double. Then I attach the position component to it, and as we need to use the green panel's coordinates as a reference in the 3D space and changing the z-axis of the yellow circle to minus 7, and I'm also temporarily changing the x-axis value to 4, which will move the circle to the right, just to show you how it cuts in a half the green panel that has a depth of 20 cm. Now, since we need to move the yellow circle towards us, we need to decrease its negative value for the z-axis by 10 cm. So here I'm going to set 6.9. And then again, to avoid that the two faces overlap, I need to move the circle just one more centimeter away from the wall and towards us. So this value has to be decreased again. And from 6.90, actually, I change it to 6.89. I'll reload the page for a default front view. And all we need to do now is move the yellow circle to the left half of the green panel. We know that the gray circle has an x-axis value of 2, and so I set this value to minus 2. Finally, since the gray circle inherits the y-axis value from its parent entity, we need to consider the green panel's coordinates again as a reference in the 3D space. Its y-axis value is 3, and so I'm going to set the same value for the yellow circle as well. Let's have a look at our scene. Well, our objects are perfectly aligned and in place, but it surely took some extra math to place and align the yellow circle, so you can understand the advantage that you can get from a relative positioning especially if you need to build objects in your scene that need to be considered as a group. For example, if I change the values in the position component of the parent entity, you can see how only the gray circle will follow. So for the y-axis, 4, and for the z-axis, let's say, minus 8. And now, if we needed to realign the yellow circle, we should update its position values again and accordingly but I'll set these values back to 3 and minus 7. So, this is how you can place entities in the 3D space in a frame, using standard or relative positioning depending on your needs. In the next lectures, we are going to have a look at the rotation and the scale components, and I'll see you there.